Thank you, and it's wonderful to be back in Berkeley again. Um, I uh, just wanted to uh, mention that you see that figure on the second page or third page? That's my real self. And what you're seeing here is my avatar, I guess you would call it these days. And, um, and we constantly have these conversations between the two of us, and, uh, and it creates a certain tension, as you can imagine. And when you turn to the page where the course that I teach is actually described, you will also find a wonderful illustration of, um, of two physicians, one holding up the heart and the other one holding up money, a dollar bill, it looks like. And um, what this course is about is actually the tension between these two poles uh, of healthcare. And uh, as we speak this morning, the Senate is meeting, trying to hash out the answer to something which has baffled and, and uh, defeated, actually, uh, legislators and uh, experts uh, on how to provide healthcare to particularly the United States, which is a unique nation, since at least the time of Truman, since after World War, I, World War II. And um, the, the key issue then becomes um, two poles that are hardly ever really discussed. And that is, how do you balance, and that's the name of the course, Balancing Act, how do you balance the moral position, which we all agree across the spectrum, that every citizen of the United States should have health care or access to health care? and possibly, uh, ultimately, free health care if it's a right. <clears throat> On the other hand, of course, health care is becoming more and more and not less and less expensive, and therefore, someone has to pay for it, ergo the dollar bill. And it's this tension between these two situations or extremes that really is not ever being um, openly and frankly confronted. And so uh, let me go back to the question of ethics. Ethics meaning moral position that everyone should have health care. And particularly in our age group, the fastest growing sector of our population is over 65. And as you go older, 75, 85, it's even faster growing. So the fastest growing sector is over 85. That's whom I met yesterday at the movers. And they also are shakers, some of them anyway. And, 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 um, and so, uh, as a result, uh, statistics show that um, over 40% of all the money spent on the health care of an average person is spent in the last six months of life. And so, when you think and put this together, you say, well, how do we deal with this? Well, it's interesting that Aristotle, who was an, an ethicist before he became a philosopher, I suppose being an ethicist drives you to either drink or the bottle or Aristotle, how is that? Uh, any, anyhow, um, uh, he mentioned that um, si the situation, uh, such as in navigation and in medicine, determines what is right and what is wrong. And if that is true, the situation in which we find ourselves between these two poles of um, everyone has a right, everyone should um, receive this uh, moral um, award for being human, and yet someone has to pay. So and as a consequence, what we have is an attempt here, speaking of the healthcare situation, an attempt here to actually expand, vastly expand this, this right, and at the same time to actually limit the expense. Now if you do that, what you end up with, in fact, is the situation that uh, Aristotle talked about, that you have to tack, you know, navigation, let's say, is tacking to the wind. Every time the wind changes, you have to change your sail and you move in another direction. So if we're subject to this kind of environment, then what it really boils down to is that every individual and physician or provider, interesting change of terminology, um, is under the same tension that the overall program is. So now we see ourselves sitting in, in a doctor's office, me as the doctor, you as the patient, or vice versa, and we have to reflect that tension. So the course is actually going to, uh, you have a handout I think here on the syllabus, going to go from actually asking the question, what is ethics, and what is the origin of medical ethics, 
through the principles of patient-doctor interaction, and particularly the modern revolution, where the doctor is switching and the patient is switching into a new moral framework, which is instead of beneficence, which is the doctor is supposed to be beneficent to the patient and do everything in the patient's uh, interest, to autonomy, which is the patient is the owner of his or her body and has total autonomy, which essentially means that the patient has to become a partner with the doctor in his or her care, and as a result, informed consent becomes an essential principle of modern medical ethics because you can't make intelligent decisions about what to do with yourself and your body and your health unless you're informed as to what the benefits and risks are. And we go on from there into um, um, more interesting issues such as so the dying patient or the terminally ill patient who makes the decision, how is the decision even made as to which patient should be continued at $10,000 a day in the intensive care unit, and which patient should um, be basically facilitated, as they say, into an easeful death. And those are the kinds of issues that we all are concerned with, and we all have knowledge of, being of a certain age. And so the group, the, the, the class, and I call it the group, will actually be more of a discussion of each of our positions on this and how to plug that in to the general situation we find ourselves in, knowing full well that on the one hand, costs will continue to accelerate, especially in the care of the older patients, and at the same time, we really have to confront the issue of giving health care to every citizen. So I welcome you all because you need to be part of this discussion. And the more you, of you that come, the better the discussion will be. Thank you. Yes.